So, ah, oh, yes. Um, what kind of tea is this, darling? It's the, I think the black kind. Oh, the black, black, black chai, or just black tea. I think, I think it's just black tea. The green tea, black curry green. Ah, black curry green tea. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, thanks, darling. I appreciate it. Mm, thank you, darling. Tastes real good. Okay, look, folks. We're talking about here we go. Um, as you may or may not know by now, you know what we do here is we mix my little personal life with ADOS kind of kind of things. Uh, it's hard to explain. Actually, it's easy to explain, but you know, some other time. Um, but one of the things is that I went to uh, went to uh, Livingston College. But think of a Livingston College like this part of Rutgers University. Think of like Livingston College as an Ivy League college with the HBCU mixed in there. It's HBCU in a in in an Ivy League college situation. Very unique, always been unique. But, it, but one, of, one of the instructors I had was a, a statistics, Mr. McClellan, I think his name was. It doesn't matter what his name was, but he taught me statistics. I didn't even teach me statistics. What I learned from statistics is what he, one of the things he said was the Mark Twain quotes. There's, there's, there's lies, lies, and damn lies, and statistics, whatever that quote is, you know, put the statistics thing. I love Mark Twain. Anyway. And so what I learned from that is like, you can bend statistics, but that's, I'm not through yet. That's just my orientation to statistics, right? I passed the course, but it means nothing. It means nothing to me. Later on in my life, because I am the way I am, I was, I was called a, uh, I'm an outlier. I'm an outlier's outlier. Let's put it that way. But one of the many, the many jobs, I mean, several times I had jobs with telephone sales. Well, one of the jobs I had one time was a CBS Post, CBS New York Times Post. Uh, but what I learned from telephone sales as well as poll things, remember when you're calling, this is back in the, in the, in the, in the 80s, so this is before cell phones. So, you know, when you call somebody, it's not only you have, they have to have a landline, okay, but they also, in other words, you're never going to get statistics from the homeless, <laughs> you know, you're never going to get statistics or, or from criminals or whatever, the, whatever the, down, the downtrodden are. But the other thing I noticed is, is that you can only call a certain a certain time period, you know. Uh, you can never call somebody early in the morning for sure, you know. Uh, but even it, it usually be interrupting their their meal or something like that. So when you're pissed off somebody's meal, you know, they might give you a wrong answer. But that's not true. Usually people usually people answer very truthfully for whatever reason they answer the question they give they give you a truthful answer. You really gotta be off, off, off to give it a, a different kind of answer. Anyway. So so basically it's who you can who you can who you talk to. You know, if, if I'm calling a certain area to give you a stack of phone numbers, and, and, and you say it's the area, I don't know St. Louis, but I'm supposed to go in there and just, just, just but, but say in St. Louis, you have the black area, da, 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 according to the area codes, you know, the phone codes, or where you live, right? So if you're not calling that area, then you're not getting that result, you know, or, or if your phone bill can't be, whatever, you don't have a phone, da, 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 da. Okay, so I was noticing lately because everybody was saying Biden, he's winning, he's he's overlapping everybody by whatever, yeah, you know, there he's in his thirty-nine whatever percentile, and they're in there, you know, twenty whatever or zero percentile. Anyway, so I was looking at this this poll that came out, and they have uh, here's what they have. Let me just say what they have. Let me take this off. Uh, they have Elizabeth Warren at twenty-five percent. Kamala Harris at uh, uh, Kamala, however you say her name, uh, at 11 percent. Joe Biden at 14 percent. Pete Buttigieg at um, 9 percent. Bernie Sanders at 26 percent. Beto Rock at something percent. Uh, Steve, whoever I don't know who that is, Tulsa Gabbard at what's that? Two percent. And then go then Marion Williams at one percent. Uh, Yang at two percent. Others three percent. So you see, those are your those those are your people that they have. No. What happened? No, no. Oh yeah, it is better or wrong. Anyway, but this is not what this is not the, another poll. I'm not saying what this poll was, but another poll has you know Biden, you know, thirty whatever percent. Da 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 da. So how can one poll can do one thing, and another poll can do another? Because the numbers are yours, you know, baby. That's what it is. But the point is, at this early stage, 
what are the poles? The poles are just fodder or just uh, source materials for for TV pundits who have no how do you become a pundit on TV because you've been in the party and then all of a sudden you after 50 years or what's that well, who's on PBS Shields and Brooks or whoever they are Shields and whoever is on CBS I've been look I'm an old guy and when I, I started listening to Posse a long time ago but I've been seeing these guys since my memory I mean they didn't they, they, they even look I know you know um, Judith um, that's what that's who they're polling they're polling people like that and a lot of these pundits they have allegiances because they're pundits they came through a political season a, a, a political whatever session a political strain a political political op whatever we are we have operatives to operate out of well because of that they are uh, they have allegiances or they have their connections are with in that world so when these, these polls and stuff like that, they are, when they call the Washington bubble, they're talking to themselves. They really are talking to themselves. So, you know, you can jump in that conversation if you want, but it's like, hey, look, name the, name the not the richest, but name the most influential people you have in your town, and how many times do you hang out with them? Let's put it that way. Huh? huh? How many times? I don't know. Not many. Do you are you have membership in the golf club, in, in the golf course, the golf club, or whatever it is? No, when they can, what are they talking about? Oh, your poll said this, but oh, let's get put our money behind. And and you know, it's, here's the funny thing. And these early things, not only do, do they they do with the polls, but then they you, you find out what people's hearts are really, because right now, this early stage, you're supposed to be you're supposed to be pushing for your your agenda, your personal. Say you have seven things on your agenda. Okay, you can't deal with that. I mean, you look at okay, you look at all the candidates, and you find out that only two or three candidates embrace most of your seven things. But even if you have that, what is your most important thing? That's what you should be concentrating on right now to get that agenda. Especially if the person is only polling at one percent, two percent, three percent, whatever, fifteen percent. You you pushing that agenda, not that person, but that agenda that the person is pushing. Right, and that should knock out a whole lot of people, you know. And so you push that agenda at this early stage, and then at some particular point when the primaries and and and, and caucuses start, uh, well, yeah, you, then you notice what's going on. That's the real poll when the when the people start voting, they start coming in. So right now they're just trying to get troops lined up and see where people stand. The most disgusting thing, though, the most disgusting. Oh, I have to say this. I, I, I you know, I don't. I do these commentaries, but I really like to do. I, I I wrote. I write really. I don't say good, but but you know, not not offensive uh, comments and comments comment sessions, whatever have you. But the most, the latest, I really feel like doing some. I only curse twice a year, and this um, I won't be to July third when I can curse again. But gee, I would be cursing. Mm. I'm gonna end here, but you have to know this. Several people in the CBC, in fact, ADOS out right now. We should be looking for what a strategy, whatever. But we also should be looking for who to. Who can we primary with these CBC people? We need to primary people right now. Threaten them, get people on board to primary, whatever, you know, get it going. Because here's what these, 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 okay, I'm going to curse. I'm going to curse. Ready? Here's what these suckers at the CBC is doing, or or, or the, the, the outspoken suckers at the CBC. I don't know what my congressman doing. He ain't saying nothing yet. But he's got this Taiwanese uh, alliance. Anyway, here's what they're saying. They would love a ticket of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Joe Biden as president, Kamala Harris as vice president. It's kind of stupid. At this particular point, there's no primaries or anything like that. Why would you even... I mean, I have a slate. I say Tulsa Gabbard and Andrew Yang, but I'm not wedded to that straight. It's slate. It's just say, hey, let me throw this out here and see what's going on. But I'm not wedded to that. Well, maybe these people aren't wedded to the scene. But, but, but for anybody, any black person to have the, the top of your ticket... Uh, 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 a white supremacist, yes, uh, he is a racist white supremacist. Ang he's an Anglo-racist white supremacist, he being Joe Biden. As a top tick, now this is the person that, that threw your men in jail, threw us, the men, in jail. Him and, 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 and Hillary, he's more Hillary than Hillary, as, as, as a matter of fact, as far as black men ain't going to jail, or, or the downtrodden, putting the downtrodden in jail. He's the top of the ticket. And then uh, his vice president is going to be the, the 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 woman the the woman who who's all for immigration who the immigrant woman she's comes from immigration stop I'm not jumping on immigrants I'm just telling you that's what she is she has no interest in in ADOS because she doesn't come from ADOS stock 
right? So she has to do her interest. So, so I don't blame her for her interest, but a part of her interest is locking up black women. Black women. So you got the, the top of the ticket locks up black men. The, uh, the, the other part of the ticket locks up black women. Black people. Hey, the U.S., what's going on? Maybe I, I, I need to get back. I got to talk to some people, man. Because us black people, if, if we go down to South Carolina, because of Clyburg, whoever it is, if that primary go down to primary, black people go down to primary because they're, they're looking for a white savior, a white savior that kills them, it's going to be terrible. So, actually, this is kind of interesting. We talk about separating the wheat from the chaff. This is the ultimate separation of the wheat from the chaff. You listen to the polls if you want to. You listen to the, the CBCs who ain't did nothing for you. CBCs, Convention Black Caucus peoples, who, who ain't did nothing for you. Listen to, you. listen to all these people in polling with all these people ain't did nothing for you and getting on their side. It's like, you know, fell in love with your waters. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway, I'm, I'm through. I being me, T from the Patterson's taking the train to Tibet and letting you know what I only suspect from a desk, a desk, this desk, of the ADOS, the American Descendants of Chattel Slavery.